Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to What Happened to You. Before we begin today's episode, I want to thank everyone who left reviews of the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. One of the reviews that came in this week was from Hellshell, titled Beautiful Podcast. The topics on this podcast are heavy, yet the host brings a light humor to it. Shout out to everyone who has shared their story. It's such an inspiration to hear how something tragic happening to you does not mean your life cannot continue with love, compassion, and happiness, not to mention humor. Thank you to Hellshell and everyone else who has left a review. And if you haven't already, click the links in the description of this podcast and leave a five-star review and write a review if you'd like. Hey, Kai. Hey. <laughs> oh, great to see you, dude. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm great, man. How are you? Doing swell. Just got done with a little mini meditation. Got my podcast mic. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Awesome. I heard you just got done with like that meditation. What's What's been new? Oh, yeah. All, I mean, just came from a meditation about 15 minutes ago, just like you. So, yeah. I'm trying to get to the point where if I ever feel like I'm not doing well, using that as an opportunity to relax further and to be like, hey, like, you know, no matter how, no matter what you're feeling, no matter how negative you're feeling, like, this is not what it's going to be forever. It's all temporary, you know, the classic meditation takeaways and just sort of like relaxing into stress. If I Mm. feel something that's negative, just like totally feeling it and letting it pass through instead of creating like mental blocks of why I shouldn't feel this and you know, all the conditioned tendencies that we've picked up along the way in our lives. And Mm. so, yeah, so I I feel like I'm doing really well. And then when I'm not doing well, I try Mm. to treat that as an opportunity to do better. So, Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been good, man. Wow, <laughs> that's some like ascended master shit. <laughs> like for real, it, it reminded me of when I used to watch Avatar, Uncle Iroh, and all. I mean, I don't know if that's there was one Iroh, but just there were like little lessons on like chakras and when you have an emotion, allow yourself to feel it, but then don't let it get stuck in the body as blocked energy. Yeah. And I feel like humans we can either fragment and through fragmentation uh feel uh repression suppression even potentially disassociation or we can go to a place of wholeness and integration and it just sounds like you've really got like a really awesome process of integrating those emotions in a really healthy way so that they don't turn into bits and pieces that are like lost in your body so that's amazing dude yeah, thank you. That was a very eloquent way of saying that. Yeah, <laughs> Avatar is so cool. You can really learn a lot from that that show. In addition to it yeah. being sick, so seriously, I feel that. I feel um, it. Thank you so much for doing this. I am stoked to have you on. Obviously, we're just already <laughs> right into the mix with <laughs> meditation and spirituality. Yeah. Um, but it's really good to see you, dude. Like, I, you yeah, know, yeah. it's one of those things where I know it's been a while, but like, it's just, we're just, feels like we just chatted yesterday. I know, it's crazy. It must be, honestly, I have some fun, like, theories about meditation I'll have to share with you later. Yeah. But it's just so fun. Just like, it feels like sometimes you just, kick off where you're like oh feels like no time went by even though we had our own exploration and growth i like how we're both growing our hair out might as well you know yeah (laughs) i'm all for it and your voice dude wow (laughs) oh feels so much more natural it feels like i'm finally growing into who i've always been it's very peculiar yeah yeah it's dope it's amazing it's sometimes i think about it and like i had to do a lot of like inner trauma with uh the story and you know other people making me feel uh different things about it but it's like now i'm like oh wait shit dude this is like two incarnations in one <laughs> even, though, like, even though i've always felt like a dude inside like being perceived as a woman you kind of like get this other take so it's now it's it's interesting part of like the process of meditation and just spending time alone in silence and breath work is 
finding like the positives and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for this, uh, this time on earth right now. It's awesome. Two incarnations in one. That's something we're going to have to get into. I have a couple of things I'd love to talk to you about, <laughs> yeah. about with, with regards to that. For sure. We connected on TikTok originally. I think mm-hmm. I followed you or you followed. Somehow we saw each other's content. And I remember yeah. just being so drawn towards your energy and the way that you like the way that I felt watching your content. And mm-hmm. we hadn't talked before, but I remember joining your live and just being like, yo, what's up? Love your stuff. And you were like, Sebastian, like, Dude, I just see you accepting an award. Like you just said this thing to me and it wasn't like you were like, you're gonna win an Oscar or a thing. You know, it was just like, I see you helping people in an award winning way. And I remember when I was in your live, I got these goosebumps and I was like, I don't even know who this person is. And you know, <laughs> they don't really know me, but I feel this connection and, and draw towards you. and. That really stuck with me and it, it made me feel really good, even though I don't even know, you know, what the thing is. It's just like, <laughs> oh, here's somebody who, who, you know, sees this aspect of me that um, sometimes I might not see in myself. So it felt really good to mm-hmm. share that moment. So and then I went on to we did your podcast about a year and a half ago. And um, mm-hmm. now we're <laughs> reconnecting for uh, round two <laughs> online. So, Woo. yeah, Kai, thank you so much awesome. for being here, man. Yeah, that was that was honestly really cool. It was it was a peculiar experience too because I was getting used to like saying like following that intuitive feel of like, oh, I should really say this. And before, sometimes I'd feel like, oh, but what if someone you know feels weird about this? And I I was getting over that bump, and so it was really cool that we just like connected instantly. And I just remember thinking like, this feels like a brother from another, <laughs> I don't know from where, but you just like yeah. energetically, I'm like, Whoa, this is cool. I don't really know how to describe it. Yeah. It's hard to put into words, but yeah. that, that is such a key element of life that I'm also working on right now is like following yeah. that, that gut instinct. I'm uh, I'm just I'm really grateful to have you here and I'm excited to get into all of these sort of spiritual topics that we uh we love to chat about. So, yeah. let's hop right in. Kai, what Do happened it. to you? Uh, well, uh so so I went to Europe for 100 days. Uh, it was really interesting too because you know the way that I expl- that it feels, I don't know if this makes sense, but I, I use this uh, as an example is like if you're at the edge of a black hole one minute on a on a black hole, like on the edge of the horizon, is the equivalent of uh, like of seven hundred years on planet Earth. And when I was in Europe and I was going through this experience, it was really interesting because it felt like when I came back, it felt like I was a hundred years old, but I still looked like this because there was so many moments where I was challenged so frequently and so shockingly that I didn't know what to do. There is something about traveling. I went to to Europe for uh, just a month after college and everything that you see is new every day. Yeah. And it's sort of like when we're kids, it feels like time moves so much slower. And I think mm-hmm. that that's because we're taking in all of these new things every day. But when you spend a full year inside, like so many of us have recently, it's like it time just speeds up because what's the there's nothing significant happening. It's hard to remember even yeah. what happened two days ago when it was pretty much all the same. So I feel the same way where like mm-hmm. <laughs> and it sounds very first worldly of us to be like, hey, we went to Europe, <laughs> and it changed our lives, dude, you know, but it does. And, it, and it, yeah. especially when like, you know, for me, I hadn't had much immersion like outside of the U.S. Mm-hmm. really at all. So it's it's interacting with new people and also being like realizing that there's like a whole world out there. I felt like I grew a lot in that short period of time. Yeah, because it's just so many new stimuli. So when you ask what happened to me? There's one that stands out particularly about, um, I told you about this, actually, it was really interesting. I, I reached out to you because I, I knew that um, you went through a, a healing process that was amazing. And um, I was just like, dang, I really would appreciate <laughs> Sebastian's perspective on this because I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I was literally in shock i was just like huh 
another thing is like it felt like also I was a black hole in the sense of like weird stuff just came it's almost like I was wondering am I attracting weird stuff right now like is it my mindset like Mm. is this like do I want to get challenged right now but just really weird stuff and I'd be like working on this website because I make websites for people and um, there's this missionary guy who's maybe like hmm, I'd say like 50 and he was with another dude who was a little younger and they're like hey you want to come over and eat some pizza and me i try to yes say in the world i learned that from improv yeah of course <laughs> here it takes you go with it <laughs> and so we ate some pizza and we started talking about christianity and that's actually something i'm extremely passionate about uh because i grew up in a fundamental uh protestant denomination of christianity that was um let's just say not beneficial for releasing psychological fear um Mm -hmm. the denomination i was in was uh it was there's just a lot of things i needed to heal from and so i i'm actually very passionate about helping people heal from unnecessary psychological fear that uh comes from certain doctrines within fundamental christianity and so we just kind of went into it uh got pretty deep and then he was like hey um we should go on a walk, uh, you know, come to my room later and we'll, we'll figure out things. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Like didn't really think much about it. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was probably, so I did some work and then I went up to his room and he's like, yeah, yeah, come in. I was like, oh, it's a little weird, but okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, just kind of, this is a new situation. And, um, he started, asking me questions uh, a little bit like do you think it's like a sin to be gay because he was still you know a missionary for his church and he's trying to proselytize convert people um do what he felt in his heart was the right thing to do and i was just like no i i mean personally for me i see it in like a scientific perspective and also just like the animal kingdom is not hetero so I mean, there's multiple things. And then I went into like the Bible verses. um, I remember hearing that. And then he's like, you know uh, what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Wait, sorry. What? No, I was just going to say, yeah. Like I, I, there are, I remember seeing an article recently about gay penguins and uh, (laughs) they go around and like take other penguins eggs (laughs) and then raise them as their own. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And seahorses, they have, the males have the babies. And I think it's easy for like to get kind of compartmentalized like within religions we kind of uh shut out outward stimuli and we only focus on the doctrines but when we kind of expand a little bit we're like wait is this really like if it's so much of a sin you know and just kind of critically think about maybe different perceptions how history has evolved what was normal yada 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 mm-hmm. we kind of get out of that box again um and then uh i noticed that there was like some something going on within him and i was like like i couldn't give you a healing meditation if that's something you know i mean i know you might be afraid of like the word meditation because i know where you come from but it's just really just breath work and i would just guide it and i could help you out and it took a weird turn all of a sudden um he was like you know i was i was i found you on youtube and i was like okay um he's like is this you? And it was like, before I changed my picture and everything. So it's like, I, it was when, uh, before I medically transitioned. So I had long hair and I guess I had like a couple videos up that I didn't put on private. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, so you're trans. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, well, so what's going on in your pants? And I was like, well, that went from one to one under real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta love it um <laughs> so i i tried to explain to him like in the nicest way possible that like just how you wouldn't go up to some random person and ask how big their dick is like you don't just ask someone like what's in their pants yeah do you have one seems even may, might be even less appropriate than how big <laughs> yeah yeah um but like he was just like oh no no i'm just wondering if you have a dick i'm like well, you know, it sounds like maybe you got to do some research on what it means to be transgender, um, because when you transition, it's because your body doesn't conform with how you think of yourself and gender. 
and I can't speak for everyone, but for me, my body didn't conform to my gender identity as male. And so when you transition, you transition and that, that happens, you take testosterone. So your body changes. I was just trying to be nice about it. And, um, it kind of got a little weird at that moment where I was like, he kind of got in the bed and, um, was like, you know, these questions were a little, little awkward. Like he's on a bed, he's kind of sprawled out. He's asking me questions. And I was like, you know, I'm, and that, this is when I kind of was like, okay, I got to take control of this situation or else this could be weird. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, I will give you a meditation, but you got to sit down there. <laughs> you can't sit on your bed. All right. I'm just going to, I got to go. And um, he's like, I, I don't know. And he was like trying to sit down, but then he got back on his bed. I was like, ah, um, it's funny I, to think about this uh, guy just sprawled out on his bed. Like, so do you have a dick? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, tough, tough foreplay yeah. talk there, fella. <laughs> it was just weird. And I was just like, dude, I don't know. Like, this is just a weird way to talk to you. And I was trying to, you know, justify it, but it was also just like getting weird vibes. Um, yeah. And he got a phone call. And so I was like, I'm going to leave. And then he's like, we should get uh, lunch. And, um, you know, I stuck with it because I love to heal with heal people. Mm-hmm. And like, even though I felt uncomfortable, you know, that's kind of like my downfall is like I give people uh, these chances because I feel like their healing is part of my priority or like I love to help people heal. Um, so we got dinner or sorry, lunch. And he said to me, he's like, yeah, you know, you have a lot of. And I was like what he's like you have a lot of like i know he was like wanted to say it but he also felt like it was kind of like choppy ground because he's like a missionary dude and i was like are you trying to say like i have a lot of sexual energy and he's like yes what it was really weird but uh i didn't i was just like yeah i mean i kind of know that about me because um i'm technically going through puberty and so I'm a boy, right? Like going through an intense period and potentially that could be maybe, I don't know, something, but also at the same time, it's like, it makes people uncomfortable um, in the situation where if you're like exploring those questions on a bed, I totally respect it if it's like over lunch where it's like, but kind of in that scenario, I definitely felt like something could have went bad if I didn't take control. And I'm glad I just was stern with that. Yeah. And especially, yeah, in in those environments, too, it's like it's hard to answer the question without worrying about how it will be perceived. So you're like, might not be answering fully. Again, coming back to authenticity, you might be more concerned with like keeping yourself safe rather than like, Mm -hmm. you know, saying what you really mean. But it was weird because I know nothing necessarily happened in the moment. But the interesting part was it was actually traumatic for me um, in a weird way because after that moment, I didn't notice the trauma until like people who were like bald, like started to scare me, which is like, that's how I know I'm getting trauma in the body is when I'm triggered by a certain person, like what that person who did something that made me feel uncomfortable. And I start to project it on other people. So I was like, Oh shoot, I got to heal from this now. Interesting. What we were talking about earlier about going with it and like following these gut feelings and intuition in this situation that you're in, you're in a spot where you want to go with it and give this person, you know, your full attention and try to allow them to heal and give them space for all of that. But at the same time, you're juggling your gut reaction, which is Mm -hmm. to get out. So it's sort of tough in that moment because you don't want to just stop going with it. But at the same time, you don't want to stop trusting your intuition. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a certain point where our intuition has to take priority over going with it Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. going with it isn't always optimal. Most of the time, it's great to relax in a situation Mm -hmm. and just allow yourself to be. But if you recognize that you have that feeling, we have to act on that. And it's just, it's tough when you're in an environment, especially when you're somebody like yourself who has a tendency to prioritize other people's healing, maybe mm-hmm. above your own well-being. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's difficult. 
And again, there's like a whole spectrum of these things. Just because nothing yeah. physical happened between you and this person doesn't mean that it wasn't traumatizing. Exactly. And there's, you know, a, a whole realm of emotional trauma traumatization that, that mm -hmm. can occur without any physical contact. So it's so reasonable for it to have had that effect on you. And I was listening to this video from Eckhart Tolle the other day, uh, and it was titled uh, a, con a, a Conscious No or consciously saying no. Mm. And he was basically talking about how like, we can say no in a way that doesn't cause the person to not be okay. You can mm -hmm. say no in a way that still lets them know, like energetically that you mm -hmm. love them and care about them. And that it's not because you don't wanna be around them in this moment. I mean, mm -hmm. it is kind of that, but it's not because of who they are, it's because of there's something else that you need to do. But I feel like we're brought up in a way that it, it makes it so hard to say no because you're trying to juggle the other person's emotions. And, you know, you and I are similar in this way where oftentimes we end up, it ends up being to our own detriment, this prioritization of other people. So mm -hmm. I feel like it just comes back to like letting yourself know that you're not letting people down by prioritizing yourself. Mm. And ultimately you're like recharging. If you need to spend some time alone, you can recharge and like mm -hmm. fill yourself up first before trying to help everybody else. And then you're coming from a place of, you know, abundance rather than lack. Where did you start when you started noticing this fear of bald men? Did that, did you feel that in your body somewhere? Um, you know, it's interesting because it kind of was like a compound, um, of like, um, so previously there was a felon in one of the hostels that was in and so he was like doing something and at 6 a.m the switzerland police came in barged in and were like show us your passports and i actually didn't have an opportunity to change my passport before i went and so there's another dude who had lesser hair um i don't know if he was fully bald or partially but um he was like is this you? I was like, yeah, it was me. I medically transitioned. He's like, do you have a dick? And I was just like scared <laughs> oh, that he was God. like, cause he's like police. And I'm like, what is he going to, you know, I'm like, I'm trans. Like, and like, I was so scared because I didn't know what they, what their power is in Switzerland. And like, if I, you know, with the lawyers and all this stuff and what they would do, but luckily he just was like, he, you know, went on, but I was like, what is me having a dick have to do with like the felon? And it was just yeah. like one of those weird things that I was like, is this my life now? <laughs> but, um, you know, you ask all these questions and I'm like, damn, I really need to change my passport. I was on me. But yeah, yeah I felt it like um, just security wise around like the lower area. Maybe some would say like root, just kind of in that area. Um, just not secure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's tough when you start being tangentially affected by, you know, people are questioning whether you have a dick, even when you're not involved with the reason that they're there. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah. The reason I was asking about where you felt that fear of, of mm -hmm. bald men was because I've been trying to do that recently because like all when I start like recognizing a fear or like something, some negative feeling that I have, mm -hmm. I'll try to think my way out of it oftentimes. I'll be like, hey, mm. here's here's why you don't need to worry about this. Here's a couple of examples. You know, I'll try to ra reason my way out with thought. And mm -hmm. I'm now trying to just focus on identifying where the actual feeling is and then just like p putting my awareness there for a as long as needed. And just eventually what will happen sometimes is the feeling will like move through my body mm. and then it will sort of evaporate or you know mm -hmm. whatever's happening you allow wow. yourself to feel the dormant feelings and uh it's i found it to be more much more effective than anything that i can think my way out of because even though i think it, thinking thinking my way out of a of, of a problem feels more like a band-aid rather than like actually healing the wound it's like a temporary fix until the thing comes back whether it's seeing another bald guy or you know whatever it is but once you start feeling the emotions, it feels like they're, you know, they're ready to be processed if we'll, if we'll let, a, if we'll let them. So, so I have a question for you. 
that's beautiful. Thank you. I'm I'm going to start incorporating that actually a lot more because I think I've been a little head heavy with that. And I think just going into feelings is a really beautiful way to dismantle any like energy blockages. Um, like you've always been really good with sharing what's happened with you and um, something I don't know why, but I just noticed when I was sharing that I just felt like, like I can't share my story. Like who, like the ego kind of is like, who do you think you are to share, you know, a story? Like, that's not right. Like, even though I didn't say any names or anything like, and this is, you know, I'm trying to stay as objective as possible. And, you know, I'm glad this person, and I not saying, I still feel this weird, like egoic where it's like, you shouldn't share, like you should keep your life private, all this stuff. Like, how do you, how do you move beyond that? I think it <laughs> right away. I think, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I, I do think that a big part of the release of the sort of egoic tendency to bottle these things up is recognizing mm -hmm. how many people you can help by sharing your story, mm. which you never really realize until you start doing it. Mm -hmm. And especially like I found that it's, you know, doing this podcast and talking to people of all of the whole range of trauma pretty much no matter where you fall on that range you have this sense of people have this sense of guilt that's like i i don't need to share this like people have been through so much worse and like it feels sometimes like you're unworthy of the attention that you would receive from this or the healing that you you might not think you deserve or even need healing because it also might be your brain's sort of defense mechanism to be like, hey, this wasn't that bad. You don't need to make a, a big deal about this by sharing it. But as long as you have negative feelings associated with it, and even when you heal those negative feelings, it's, it's always worth it to be talking about it because you allow yourself, you give yourself the chance to heal rather than the inevitable suppression that comes from thinking like, ah, don't worry about it it's fine you know mm. so i think it, i think it's a couple of things but to answer your question yeah it's like when we go through things like this but it, it's bigger than us and mm. especially when you think about like maybe not everyone has been molested but so many people have these gray area experiences where they're not even sure if this like quote unquote counts mm. and then mm -hmm. you know where you fall on this spectrum there's people who are further on the other end than you who are like mm -hmm. well but kai went through that so i you know well, i shouldn't share what i went through because that's not even that bad compared to what kai went through like everyone it's all mm -hmm. subjective and everyone's in their own heads trying to like invalidate their own trauma and then of course <laughs> you know you have the people that are like wanting to make a huge deal about their trauma for egoic reasons as well where it's like i need i need this attention i need people to you know look at me or, or whatever it is the, the ego is always trying to like mm -hmm. come up with justifications for why we should or should not do something but i think it's just coming back to like it's how you feel rather than how you think about it and if you feel that there are emotions in you from that experience then no matter what you think until you allow yourself to feel those things you know they'll they'll generally remain so it's really up to you you deserve to heal and you never know how many people you'll help by healing so yeah yeah some, something like that's that that's beautifully said <laughs> thanks dude yeah thank you man that's of course. really puts it into perspective i was reading a description of one of your instagram posts the other day and i wrote it down because it really stuck with me you said gender incongruence is turning into gender euphoria mm. and that really was i thought was really interesting and i wanted to ask you about like was there a moment or do you remember when you first started feeling gender incongruence yeah um so when you're younger there's not much like you're not you know given like sex ed courses or anything and so it's like you're trying to figure out things um and when i was a kid i would look at like a magazine and i like halloween magazine i remember being like oh yeah that's gonna be me when i'm an adult it'd be like batman and then like my mom or someone would be like oh no honey like this is what you're supposed to look like and i see like this big bombshell lady beautiful <laughs> but i'm just like no that's not who i am <laughs> mm -hmm. um and i I'd tell my parents, I'd be like, it was probably like four or five. This is my earliest memory. I'd be like, 
I'm a boy. Call me Brian. I don't want to cut my hair. And they'd be like, no, your name's Kylie. You're going to keep your hair, whatever. And that was like my earliest memory of like kind of revolting. Like they let me tomboy and like let me do cars and stuff. And uh, which was really nice because I love playing with cars. So I'd be so sad if they didn't. Yeah. So I've, I've known like it felt weird. I don't know how to describe it, but when I got older, there was like the best way to say it is like when you're grown up to be a people pleaser because people te- like they reward you for doing looking a certain way, acting a certain way. They give you presents or they give you good emotions. Then you start to kind of like do that to protect yourself and to feel that. But you always deep down, you always know. And that was a big part of meditation is it's like really collecting the bits and pieces that people don't like, but have always been a part of who you are. And when I started to do that, it was um, like, I would notice I'd be more conscious of like when I would say something or when I, when something would feel weird, um, you know, like I had a, when I was starting to come out of my shell um, there, I was dating this one girl and I was just like, it just, what is this? Like, where you know, like, it feels like I have a phantom dick, but <laughs> like, what's going on with life, you know? And um, so it was a journey of reclaiming. Um, and I've always known, but it's just one of those things where you, when you push it down, it's a safety mechanism because it's such an intense thing to feel like you've lived your life to please other people that you can't bring it up because you might get kicked out people might leave you, friends might leave you that it's like, is it worth it to be my true self? Absolutely feel that you said you, you know, you're now basically going through puberty as a man. Mm -hmm. I was getting molested when I was going through puberty. I actually started before I was or like right Mm -hmm. around the time. And I remember developing that people pleasing tendency and Mm -hmm. it was like, Hey, I know this is going on and I know that this is wrong but what i risk by being truthful about what i'm feeling and what's Mm -hmm. happening is losing my friend potentially and making his dad mad making him mad making his family mad making Mm. all of the potential people who would respond negatively to this mad you know our brains fill in the blanks of what's going to happen when we be who we really are and and share what's happened to us as we said earlier, you know, we're, we're often rarely right about how people will actually respond. And, and then again, it's like yeah. the people that do respond negatively shouldn't be in our lives anyway. So it's like mm-hmm. you'll, you'll just very quickly find your tribe when you start being who you are. Or maybe not that wow. quickly, but no matter how long it takes, it's worth it. So yeah, I, I, know, I know the people-pleasing feeling mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, I feel people-pleasing tendencies just in terms of like hanging out with people. Mm-hmm. And for so long, I mean, I would just hang out with people just because I felt obligated to. But then mm-hmm. when I'm hanging out with them, like I'm not having a good time because I really like to just be on my own or be doing something else. So it's like, do those people, is it fair to them to just be like, you know, sort of this uh, uh, obligatory hangout, you know, it's, it's actually oftentimes accomplishing the wrong thing. So right. yeah, wow. these tendencies are really interesting. Very similar. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. So what was the experience like between sort of recognizing these tendencies that you had? And then when did you get to the point where you were starting to experience this gender euphoria, like feeling like you were at home? So I got kicked out of my house for medically transitioning Wow. Um, so that's why I went to Europe for a hundred days. And um, who were you living with? Just my family. Wow. What was the sort of progression that led up to them kicking you out? Yeah, it's a, it's actually very interesting because I always was like this tomboy. And I think what kind of ended up happening was they saw it as a phase, the way that they processed it in their brain was this couldn't be anything but a phase and so because of that we're just going to run with it and so like I also hit a point in seventh grade where I was getting like I didn't really have friends um like I had like the neighborhood friends and they're really awesome and but like you know how there's like breaks and lunches not everyone has the same lunch and Mm -hmm. stuff goes down I just didn't have like a lot of support and I felt kind of like alone and like I didn't fit in with the girls 
and then like my guy friends were like in older grades and so it just was like kind of weird so when I went and switched schools I got bullied um because they're I don't know it was just like this weird I was just like I'm literally not talking at all how am I getting bullied <laughs> it was just so weird to me I was just like why can't I just mind my own business and just like find my tribe and then eventually like these girls kind of took me in and I was like okay like and they were you know showing me stuff and like this is how you use mascara and this is how and I was like if this is what I got to do to not be bullied like whatever I'll do it <laughs> kind of thing um but it wasn't who I was and so I think just um my parents thought like oh yay you know he's finally out of his tomboy phase or whatever and then um but that was just like I didn't want to get bullied <laughs> pretty reasonable and so yeah and so that kind of happened but I still like super tomboyish like I still did everything and so I think they classified it as I'm just a tomboy and that's it and I would ask them like hey is, you know when I was born you know like was it was there any chromosomal variations like anything and they'd be like don't talk to and I'm like okay I'm just asking but when I came out to myself it took me some time to actually like get it to them um, but it was a, it was a lot faster than I'd like it to be, but I knew that there wasn't like for me, for some reason, just like, I'm, I'm going at my own pace. And if they can't, you know, like, so I just went at what I was comfortable with. So I probably came out as non-binary December, 2019, February, I finally came out to them as trans. The reason why I actually waited was because I was also afraid that they're going to kick me off their insurance. And I was still not at a place where I could like um, figure that out. And I already knew it was kind of like a hot button topic. And I was kind of debating like if it was even worth it to like tell them and just like be who I was. Because when I think about labels, it's like a lot of times if like if I just grow a beard, I just grow a beard. If I say I'm trans, all of a sudden, oh, no, what's going on, you know, and it's like <laughs> something with labels that trigger people. And so I'm I kind of went back and forth. But like um, I finally was just like for my own sake, even if I get kicked out, even if I get kicked off insurance, I'll just do it um, because this is like a part of who I am and it makes me happy. I did a little later because I didn't know, you know, just kind of if I could stock up with the testosterone that way. By the time I get kicked off, I got my own insurance, yeah. which I did get kicked off. So <laughs> <laughs> what was that conversation like with your parents? It was not easy. Dad didn't really talk to me for like two weeks, just kind of shook his head when I came out, told me he would <laughs> never see me as a man. And I did this weird thing where I always do. It's like a weird trauma response when I like hugged him and I said, it's OK. And I was like, why did I do that? um like, oh it's so classic <laughs> oh my god people pleaser let me make sure that everyone around me is okay about the thing that i'm going through yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then my mom it was really difficult uh for her i think it was easier when i said i was non-binary to her because like she could like identify a connection like um i was like mom imagine the angels like you know how they're androgynous it's kind of like non-binary and she's like oh okay you're like an angel and i'm like yeah <laughs> when i said like actually like i've been trying to dig through this repression and like come to you know an honest transparency with myself and i'm actually trans she was like no i can't do this <laughs> it's sad that who i am as a person has to hurt the people i love the most and so it's hard you know just coming to the grips and so some way that i take back my power is like instead of saying like, I got kicked out, like, yes, those are the facts. And I'm learning, it's okay to say the facts. Like, you're not a bad person. A lot of times when people do stuff that's like, you know, society's like, what, why'd you do that? Um, we feel bad for saying it how it is, but that's just what it is. Um, and I used to feel really bad about that. But now I'm like, ah, I take back my power. And it's like, actually, our energies didn't match. Like, that wasn't a good place for my growth. Like, they weren't, respecting me as a person and my pronouns and who I was I was feeling guilty for being me we weren't even talking and so I almost see it now as like yes it's a fact I got 
moved out, I was told to leave. But now from like a greater whole, it's like the universe conspires for our best place at that moment. And so I had an open door to Europe and I was like, hey, you know, why not? <laughs> uh, that's a fantastic way to handle the situation. And it's sort of similar with my experience where if if I prioritized making other people feel OK, I would have never told the truth about what happened to me. And we, we can only do that for so long before we just jeopardize like our whole existence and like our authenticity. And we're basically just what we think people want us to be and not who we are. And it's tough when we share these things about ourselves that are core to who we are mm -hmm. and people respond in a way that is wanting you to be something that you're not yeah. and not believing you for these things. Mm -hmm. And especially when, you know, <laughs> we think about uh, people pleasing sort of hits its ultimate battle when the people that we love and care about won't accept us for who we are or what's happened to us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's amazing that, you know, you're sticking to who you are, regardless of how you're being perceived mm -hmm. and regardless of who perceives you that way. You can't as you know, live your life based on what other people want you to be because you'll just be an image. You'll just be like a hollow version of yourself. Um, wow. So I feel like, you know, even with your family, it's one of those things that if they're meant to be in your life, they will be. Yeah. So maybe they're not currently in your, in your corner with all of this stuff, but hopefully at some point they'll come around and sort of realize that this was just a projection of their own beliefs about what they wanted you to be and you know maybe their own insecurities you're giving them an opportunity to like come face to face with truth whatever that means to them i mean they could be interpreting this in a million different ways but at the end of the day it's like you you're absolutely making the right decision and yeah i i agree that the universe is is always conspiring for our highest good even if we can't see it currently but trusting that feeling and sort of knowing that things will work out is a pretty fun way to go through life exactly bro and like already i think the europe trip was really helpful because i had a buddy who did the same thing like he's just like yep i'm trans then he went on a trip and I mean, I, he wasn't kicked out, but like, it does give people time to just process. What does it mean? Am I really going to, you know, change my love for this person? Cause they grow a beard and they grow a dick, or mm. am I going to see past and realize, oh, this person's living their best lives. Why would I think less of that when they're so happy being who they've always been? Can I, and so they've done like substantially a lot better. I'm so grateful that they've been trying their best to come around i don't know technically fully but like i'll still like i'll go hang out at the home sometimes and like eat dinner and catch up and oh that's awesome it like it's yeah it's like repairing um and i think at a point like people reach is just like we don't have much time together so <laughs> yeah. you know i can make a fuss okay you know he has a beard he has a dick but it's like at the end of the day i'm still their child and it's like, if you want to spend time, like, let's spend time. Um, and just, I'm also learning, like, to still be okay with, like, if I'm disrespected, then, like, sticking up for myself in that moment and being okay with saying it in a firm way, but also in a way that's respectful to them so that they can, you can mirror back respect. So if someone's like, well, she doesn't really know what she's doing. Hmm. Um, it's like a lot of times when people uh, use the wrong pronouns it's to try to um, prove a point or try to trigger and it's if you don't let it affect you and you just speak your truth and you're like um, pronouns are he him appreciate if you know you show the same respect I show you it just kind of like mirrors to them what respect looks like what a compassionate uh, answer is and then hopefully eventually be like oh that was really nice how they said that you know maybe I do want to respect them as a person love that yeah. And it's also like, hey, I'm at the table. Like, feel free to just call me by my name. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny when people do that, where it's like, it's, it's, it doesn't even grammatically make sense to, to call me by my pronoun when you can see me. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> like, I'm in the room, you know? Right. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's clearly ulterior motives in that moment. But, yeah. um, 
but that's that's so great that you were able sometimes that's what people need is just like time to process and i'm sure that they you know they might regret how they handled it initially but however they however long it takes you know like at a certain point i'm just confident that like authenticity and truth it just wins eventually and even if that means removing people from your life who don't accept you for who you are it's like that that is a win in a way even if it's hard i'm glad that it's sort of all working out in the way that it needs to yeah i i really do appreciate that so the actual digging up process took like a year and a half to two years of just like meditating i was originally just meditating to get rid of my health anxiety um like i got rid of panic attacks i was like okay sweet let's try to get rid of health anxiety i got rid of like chronic health anxiety it comes up from time to time but then i was like starting to peel back layers and i was like oh no no we can't <laughs> and i was like All right. and um i'd say probably i want to say five months into um medically transitioning when i started to see my body uh fat redistribution changing um and I started to see, like, hear my voice change. And I was like, this is starting to sound more like how I see myself. Mm. Yeah. And then obviously uh, other bodily changes it just was like, okay, this is starting to feel more normal than, and I was just like in this place of gratitude. I was like, what an amazing time to be born where you can, actually like shape your body in such a way like using medicine to conform to your brain i was just like in a place of gratitude which turned into euphoria which then also helped me launch because like when i was in a place where i was finally helping myself i really i dig down deep into tiktok and i was like i wanted to share that and i i started posting a lot of spiritual stuff um because i felt like i was in a place where i was I could really give back because I was really giving to myself for once. Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm so glad you did because that was how that was how we found each other. <laughs> did oh. you um, did you I'm curious because like when I think in my head, I think I sound like myself, but I'm not I, I think I do. But it's also just I, I don't know. It's hard to put your finger on like, what do I sound like? And I'm curious. <laughs> Did you, w when you would think before you transitioned, did you notice a change in your thinking voice? That is a very good question. Um, it's interesting because the best way I can describe it was it felt like I was inhabiting a foreign body, <laughs> uh -huh. like a one that didn't belong to me, um, including the voice. And so now when I look back and like, I remember uh, memories where I would like try to contort my voice and it just didn't sound right. And I'd be like, can I try to talk a little deeper? Like how far can I get my vocal range down? And uh, I started to feel like I'm in like a body that's comfortable, like congruent with my brain, probably around like seven months when my voice really dropped. And I was like, wow this sounds like it just sounds like it's complementing how i feel inside my because you know we're we're composition of masculine and feminine energy mm -hmm. but um i feel like i'm in the sense of like masculine feminine energy i'm pretty balanced but i just i'm a little more masculine on the inside but then also on the outside like that's how it should feel and when it started to conform it just felt like uh the closest thing i can relate to is just like um congruence yeah mm -hmm. harmony <laughs> bliss euphoria <laughs> in in many ways i'd say that's just so congruent with authenticity it's like how, how do you really feel and you said something there where you, you feel like you were inhabiting the wrong body mm -hmm. and it's interesting because like we're all inhabiting bodies just mm -hmm. every one of us somehow, you know, we managed <laughs> yeah. to find ourselves inside of these bodies and are, you know, cruising around. And it seems so possible, if not likely, for there to be misplaced mm -hmm. consciousness or spirits or whatever you want to call it in bodies. But maybe it's not the wrong one. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's more of this is what your spirit 
needed to experience in this lifetime. And exactly. it's not, you know, what could be viewed as a mistake is actually, you know, quite purposeful and that this is what you were meant to experience. Yeah, dude. I literally what you said, like, I'm a big believer in complete free will. And what I mean by that is like consciously or unconsciously, I think we have some ability to um, just like we can pick our colleges or friends. I think we can have some say on, you know, what type of experience would we like to experience? Like it's not um, forced against your will. Um, so there's that added a bit. I just feel like naturally with the laws of the universe, there should be some component of being able to choose. And that just takes back my power um, to know that, okay, yes, it's a harder route, but this experience has been so interesting and so, um, yeah, just so different and so unique. And I used to see it as a curse. Um, but now I'm like, oh, wow. Like the turn of the age, like <laughs> this is, uh, you know, I'm very grateful like to have this experience because there's a lot of things I don't know if I would have been taught or like if, if I would have gotten good, like I remember going to these, you know, all women retreats and, um, you know, they'd be like, they'd be looking at me. I'd be telling like a crazy, sad story. And they'd be like, Kai, you know, you could cry, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then they'd be like, you can give us a hug too. And I'm like, oh, this is like really cool. <laughs> you know, cause they had this weird, like, internal like toxic masculinity i don't even like it just was like i need to be tough all the time i can't cry um like i still dealt with these issues even though i was in the female body and it was like really like women were i just realized how divine how beautiful how much i learned from them by being immersed in like all women sleepovers <laughs> and oh you know like in the covers just everyone's hugging everyone and you know it's great i learned a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure we could all learn a lot from an all woman sleepover um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> literally but what you said there about you, you felt like it was a curse i feel like so many of us view the quote unquote negative experiences in our life as curses or, mm. you know, how could this happen to us? How could this happen to me? And I felt the same way about the molestation for so long. And it mm. wasn't until I started doing stand up and speaking up that I, my perception of that experience completely changed, not immediately, but over time. And this is what I mean about like the importance of speaking up and to help other people because very quickly you'll find this group of people that you know often haven't had a voice until you started speaking. And wow. that is a powerful feeling and a purposeful feeling. And it makes you, my, my perception of the molestation quickly changed from a curse to an opportunity to mm -hmm. grow and to become a person who I never would have been without that experience. Going back to free will, we also have free perception everything that we go through in life like we can perceive it however we want nobody's forcing us to say you know you lose your job or you get from like you don't nobody's forcing you to believe that this is a horrible thing Ooh. most of us just sort of take on these beliefs because it seems like what society thinks and this is like yeah it's a horrible thing for this to happen but mm. we have complete uh control over our how we view things and Wow. If you start viewing these seemingly negative things as opportunities to grow, your whole perception and, and like feeling towards the experiences changes. And not just what you've been through, but what happens to you moving forward. Mm -hmm. New experiences that happen now, even if they're seemingly negative, serve a purpose. Even if you don't know what it is in the moment. I, I'm more excited about things happening now rather than immediately sort of reverting into this dread mindset. And again, this victim mindset of how could this happen to me? You know, when you, when you go through molestation or you, you know, transition or whatever the thing is that you experience and could be things, you know, they're all different, but we are allowed to feel however we want to feel about them. And that's an amazing gift that we have. That is so cool. And it's like, it's almost like 
I love how your perception about it is like you have this this ability to free your perception from I'm the victim to no this is something that has helped me even though it was horrible like your your perception about it is just blossoming into I'm using this to help people totally it's so fun to talk to you and you've obviously done an immense amount of healing and what advice would you give to somebody who has been through something similar and is hoping to get to the point where you're at now I'd say the best thing possible is really listening to your body, listening to how you feel, um, listening to what comes up. Your truth is interlaced with um, how you feel and how you're feeling about the moment. And it's even like how you feel about eventually what thoughts come in because we're not our thoughts. And I think that's something that I realize is when I, when I started to explore, I gave myself the opportunity to go beyond the form I was in that I felt comfortable with. So do a, maybe a little exploring, you know, maybe it not, might not be uh, gender incongruence, but it could be something to do with sexuality or a way you want to change your body that other people, it isn't conventional or it's not normal in the sense of like who even, what is even is normal? Like <laughs> mm -hmm. it's completely subjective already. Just like so many other things that can be subjective, but like, just, you know, maybe take little baby steps, try, try it out. Try like what feels comfortable. Maybe you don't have to go straight skydiving right away. Maybe you can um, go into a little air place where it's like fake skydiving. Then you can have yeah. someone on your back and then you can do 20 of those and then build up to eventually it's just you skydiving. And I think that's a, a big thing is exploration, not being afraid to explore what makes you happy because again i think something that uh, we both share is like life have fun with it do what you want you want to have pigtails have pigtails you want to grow out a beard all the way down to your ankles do it bro <laughs> <laughs> have, have fun is just about the best <laughs> advice i completely agree and i am so grateful to have have chatted with you today kai and uh yeah. just have one more question for you um do you have a dick? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a great question. Uh, Sebastian, I'm so glad. Where is the, yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, for real, dude. It has been an absolute pleasure oh, talking it. with you. And where can people find you on social media? Kaglo Web, um, TikTok. So just K Y G L O and then Web W E B B. And then I think it's also Kaglo Web on, yeah, Instagram and i'm free if you know anyone has any questions or if they're going through anything um my dms are open i'm here to try to help out as much as possible i appreciate you allowing me to go on your podcast and just yeah it's cool because it's like i i feel like there's so many awesome nuggets of wisdom i got from you speaking that i'm like right after this i'm just gonna <laughs> <"Woo!"> <laughs> and here it's down <laughs> So thank you, bro. Right back at you. You're welcome and thank you. Awesome, dog. All right. Double bro. deuces. Deuces, dog. <laughs> oh, that, was, you. that was so good, dude. It's so easy to talk with you. <laughs> uh, right. Seriously, man. Right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also funny, you know, because just in that last, do you have a dick joke? In mm -hmm. my head initially... I thought of it like earlier in the conversation because you had just been saying, people keep asking me, you know, people keep asking me this. And I was like, well, this would be, you know, I, it's a potential joke. And then in my head, I was like, well, maybe it's not. Maybe I should just wait. And then I was like, wait, you know who I am and you know my intentions. You know, I'm not actually asking you this. So okay. it's like you can just trust the person to know that w what you mean. And it's less about like how we say and more about how we say it. You know, I'm not exactly. like, hey, now really we need to know, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. like clearly we're joking. So I feel yeah. like that's just there's it's funny with these episodes. Oftentimes there will be like themes of the episode. And I feel like one of our themes was going with it and just trusting yourself yeah. and like not tripping about it. And it yeah. sort of just culminated at the end there. And uh, we had no intention <laughs> of like make let's make sure. Yeah, this is the, it like, was hilarious. <laughs> it, it, it was like the pretty bow on top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I, I don't mind at all I yeah. like yeah I thought that was I was like dude and you have a really cool way of just like um like the way you intertwine and like ask questions and like get things in it's it was really awesome I'm so proud of you dude like for real Thank though you, like dude.